it's not, I would think, a deal breaker. It was just kind of an irritating quirk. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. And if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. Today, I want to do a quick little review on this Proform 7,000 pound wireless vehicle scale system. Now, I've wanted something like this for a long time in terms of helping me set up my Cayman track car. I you know, wonder, well, how much does the Cayman actually weigh in the form that I've got now with the modifications that I've made? And also, what's the front and rear distribution like? What's the left and right distribution like? Just more a curiosity than anything. Now, something like this would be very handy for fine-tuning a car for uh, track usage. Now, the thing is that my skills are nowhere near good enough to, make any, to uh, have something like this make a difference to me. Um, so I really can't justify spending a thousand dollars on this vehicle scale system but luckily one of my viewers jeff happened to purchase this and he lives nearby and he said hey you want to you know try it out and see what you think and i said mm, okay so jeff was kind enough to actually drive over here to my house and drop it off so that i could play with his new toy so let me start off with the case. It comes with this fairly nice case. It's not super nice or super heavy duty. It's no Pelican case or anything, but it is pretty well made. I like the fact that it has wheels on the back and a, a handle that pops up just like a piece of luggage. That's very handy because this weighs about 45 pounds. So this will be pretty tiresome having to lug it around, but being able to pop up the handle and just wheel it along behind you, that's really nice to have. To open the case, you just pop these two latches open and fold this lid back. And the pads themselves are stored in slots in some foam here. And this isn't that cheap, crappy polystyrene or, you know, what is it called? Um, expanded polystyrene, styrofoam, that's the, uh, the commercial name for it. You know, the stuff is white, it crumbles apart, makes a huge mess. This is not that, this is some nice high density foam. And then there's a little pad here, or this little piece. And then in the top here, there's a spot to store the wireless readout and also some slots here to put spare batteries. So it's pretty well thought out. Now you should leave this piece in here during your storing it because that uh, controller unit is hanging in there in that uh, slot. And then with vibration, it does wiggle its way out. Um, so just keep that in mind. The pads themselves are about 15 inches square, so plenty of room to fit all but the most extremely wide tire on there. And they do have a like a beveled side here to help you roll or drive up onto the pads. Now, uh, I didn't do that. I just used my lift to pick the car up and then put it down on the pads once they, once they were in position. I'm not sure how well this beveled edge works because if you roll up on it, maybe the tire, since it's large enough, hits it at an angle where it doesn't flip up. I, I can't speak to that because I didn't give that a try, but it looks like it should work just fine without popping the edge up. Your mileage may vary. Once you've got the pads in position, you turn on the control unit here by pressing the power button and it fires up and it connects with all of the pads. And as you'll see, there's a light that's gonna come on and eventually starts blinking when they're all set up and they will automatically zero themselves out and you'll see all zeros on the display here. Then you just put the car onto the pads and you'll see the readout here of what your car weighs in total and how much is on each individual wheel. And that's what they call screen one, the total weight. If you're operating in a dimly lit area, you can go down here and press this button and turn on a backlight, which I found really helpful. By pressing the function button, you can switch between pounds and kilograms instantly. 
The unit also has a tear button, not T-E-A-R, but T-A-R-E, which zeroes out the pads if there's already a weight on them. Not sure what you'd use that for. The only thing that comes to mind is that you want to see the exact effect of putting something else on the car, like putting the driver in. So you would put the car on the pads, use the tear button to zero them out, and then you would get in the car and see what effect it had on the, the weights without having to you know, record and then record the changes and do subtraction. Now, as I mentioned before, this is screen one that shows you the total weight of the car and the individual weight on all four corners. You can switch between five different screens on this unit, and you do that by holding down the function button and then at the same time pressing the tear button. Each time you press the tear button, it switches to another screen. Screen two is a front rear balance screen. So it shows you what percentage of weight is on the front tires versus the rear tires. The idea is that you, know, in an ideal world, you want that to be 50-50 for a good balance between front and rear. In the case of the Cayman, it's about 45-55, 45 front, 55 rear. Switching to screen three shows you left-right balance. In other words, what percentage of the weight is on the left tires versus the right tires. And again, you'd kind of like that to be as close to 50% as possible. Now, continue pushing, you're going to get screens four and then five, and those are cross weights. That's going to tell you what uh, the weights are like when you look at the front left and the rear right, and then the other screen is the front right and the rear left. In terms of a scaling system, I think most people's primary concern is going to be, is it accurate? And in the case of the Proform wireless system, it does seem to be sort of. Now, I had the opportunity to check the weight of the Cayman against a commercial certified scale and also a four-wheel scale system at a track. And what I found is that the certified scale and the track scale were within about a half percent of each other. So they were pretty much in agreement. Now, the Proform system, when I say sort of accurate, the problem is, and I don't know if it's a defect in this unit or if it's just the nature of this product, but what I found is that when you first start up, you put the car on the scale, you get a weight. And then over the next few minutes, that weight will rise. And in the case of the Cayman, it went up about 1% or 2%. And so on average, it was right there in agreement with the other two systems. It started off a little lower than the lowest of those two, and it ended up a little higher than the highest of those two. So if you're looking for absolute, complete accuracy, I don't know which one of those two numbers you should, um, you should believe. What's odd is that I took the scales, and I had a, a weight that I know is right around 400 pounds. And so, in fact, I know it's exactly 400 pounds. And so I put that object on one of the scales. It immediately read exactly 400 pounds. And then over the next few minutes, it didn't change. It stayed right on 400 pounds. It was like 399 or something. It was, it was very, very close. So in that instance, it was very accurate. I don't know why when... I put the car on there, there was such a change. And it was it was linear. It went, or it was uh, unidirectional. It only went one way. It never went back down again. It just kept rising and rising. So in terms of accuracy, um, if you need absolute accuracy, I'd say this is not what the system that you want. But I don't know, again, if it's just this particular unit had a defect and that the others perform just fine and don't display this drift problem that I found. 
Now, another issue, and again, I don't know whether it's a, it's a single unit defect or if it's just a mistake in the programming of the remote unit. As I mentioned, the way you switch between screens is you hold down the function button and you press the tear button at the same time. Well, the way that you change from kilograms to pounds is by pushing the function button. Now, the problem I had is that when I wanted to switch between screens, I would push down the function button, press the tear button, and let it go, and it would switch to the next screen. But it would also change measurement systems. So every time I push the tear button, it would swap, swap between pounds and kilograms. And so when I was done, if I was on the wrong one, I'd have to push the function button to get back into pounds again. So that was, you know, it, it's not... I would think a deal breaker, it was just kind of an irritating quirk. So overall, to me, it seems like a relatively decent product. It doesn't blow me away. The, the quality seems pretty good in terms of, I like the case design. The pads are made of a nice, heavy, die-cast aluminum. Uh, the control unit seems sturdily made enough. You know, it's a, it's a pretty good value grade product. Now, on the other hand, I don't know exactly where the issue with the weight drift comes from, and that could be something that's extremely bothersome. I'd say if you're going to get this, get a vehicle that you know the exact weight of and see how it behaves so that you'll know how to adjust. I don't know. Uh, I have to say, though, that I kind of like it, but I find that, and the thing with the button kind of irksome. Now, on the other hand, I have never had the chance to compare it against something like a Long Acre unit, which um, Long Acre unit, not Long Acre unit. Um, <laughs> lost my train of thought. Oh, yes. Now, I, I have never had the chance to play with a Long Acre unit, but that's how I giggle every time I say Long Acre unit. I've never had a chance to play with the Long Acre version of this. And so uh, if someone is out there has the Long Acre wireless or even a wired unit, you know, I'd love to give it a try if you live in the Northeast Florida area or Long Acre. Hey, if you're listening, uh, I wouldn't mind you sending me a unit to check out or even keep. One other thing I should mention is that if you're going to use a system like this to really corner weight your car correctly. One thing that's essential is that the pads are all level and level with each other. And they do sell, if, uh, if your floor is not perfectly laboratory grade flat, they sell these trays that these sit in or other units like them that allow you to adjust and get them level and level with each other. Do be aware that those trays can cost as much or more than the pads themselves or the, the scale unit itself. So if you're looking into getting this, keep that in mind. That's a tremendous expense you may be looking for, but not expecting. Now, before you go, please go down there, click on that thumbs up button, give me a like on the video. And while you're there, if you're not one of my subscribers and we are approaching 10,000 subscribers, go ahead and click on that big shiny red subscribe button and join the channel. Both of these things don't cost a penny and they really, really help me with getting these videos more widely suggested and therefore growing the channel and creating more content. And then finally, if you want to keep up with everything I'm doing here in the garage, not just when I came in track car, but also DIY repairs, just things around the house, um, I'm going to be embarking on a whole new series of things talking about my adventures in cars. Anyhow, if you want to keep up with all that, go down there and click on that bell icon. That turns on notifications for this channel, and that way YouTube will let you know every time that I post something new from here in Cliff's Garage. I'll see you next time.